Our first scripture lesson today is from the 36th Psalm, verse 5 through 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike. O Lord, how precious is your steadfast love. O God, all people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. O continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. Our second lesson comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 12th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. 
to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by the one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. Join me in prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This morning we've had the joy of commissioning five new Stephen ministers to this very special caring ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. All of them have spent many hours in preparation, in study, and in prayer. And today they, they join with their colleagues in Stephen ministry led by our three Stephen leaders. Their growth in the spirit and in ministry will continue as those in Stephen ministry participate on a regular basis in education, development, and mutual support. As Stephen ministers, they become part of the caring ministry of this congregation and the Christian church. This care is offered to those in our fellowship as well as to those in the community who may be led to seek the loving support of a Stephen minister. And so today it's a good day to be reminded that we all share in the ministry of care, whether we be pastor, ruling elder, deacon, Stephen minister, or an individually committed disciple of Jesus Christ. The passage from Psalm 36 that Tom read for us this morning contains a powerful image of God. It's a psalm of praise, but it's also a testimony by the psalmist of the steadfast love and care of God. It has a wonderful image of how precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people take refuge in the shadow of your wings. It talks about mountains and steadfastness and being sheltered by God like an, an eagle might spread her wings over her nest to protect her young in a storm. And yet, if the truth be known, God's not a mountain, not a pile of rocks and soil. And certainly God does not have wings to shelter us. So the question is asked, how is God's love and care shown and made real among us? It's through us. It's through the caring community of Christ. It's through you. It's through me. In the commissioning service for our Stephen ministers, I said these words. As the Spirit of Christ has given you gifts for service, we ask you to use your skills and talents to help those people whom you serve and to pray for them. It was fitting this morning that the lectionary directed us not only to the Psalm 36, but also to Paul's letter to the Corinthians where talks about, Paul talks about the gifts of the Spirit. It's a familiar passage, this passage from uh, 1 Corinthians. We often use it when we ordain elders and deacons and commission Stephen ministers and set others apart for service in the church. Paul was writing to the church in Corinth at a time in which that congregation needed to be reminded that God was the source of all spiritual gifts and forms of service and that all should be used for the common good. It was a time when some people with certain gifts were saying that their gifts were superior to others. And so Paul lifts up a list of gifts that he has personally witnessed and seen as coming from the Spirit. The gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of working of miracles, the gift of prophecy, the gift of discernment, tongues and their interpretation, and the gift of healing. Healing was an important gift during the days of the early church. 
and it still is today. When we think of healing today, we primarily think of medicine and, and or psychology, the healing of body and the mind. We know that these are gifts from God which come through the God-given ability that we all possess to think, learn, and practice what we've come to know. But that's not all there is to healing. True healing is a merging of human actions and the work of the Spirit of God. It's a joining of both the physical and the spiritual. Just as today we put our emphasis on healing through medicine, in Jesus' day the emphasis was on healing through the grace and spirit of God. In the New Testament alone there are over 38 references to healing. One of those comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, which was also part of the commissioning service this morning. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we may comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we have ourselves received from God. I think as a society, we in a culture, we do recognize both the healings that come through medicine and the healings that come through the spirit, through the work of God. At the Cortland Regional Medical Center, we have a director of spiritual care. Chaplain Katie O'Neill not only ministers to the spiritual needs of family and patients and staff, but she trains and equips others to offer spiritual and pastoral care. There are many aspects to healing. And I think this is where we all can join in this ministry, whether we're commissioned or set apart or not. We're healing, as I said to the kids, begins with caring for others. And we can never underestimate the power of a simple caring act. Jesus, of course, was the supreme healer. The Bible shares accounts of his powerful miracles of healing. And these miracles showed his compassion. And they witnessed to others that Jesus was indeed sent from God. But I like to think there were other ways that Jesus healed and showed his care beyond the miracles, ones that we can identify with. There was his acceptance of children at his feet when many adults thought that the children's place was to be seen and not heard. There was Jesus reaching out and accepting those who were at the margins of society, women, simple fishermen, shepherds, and even tax collectors. There's Jesus speaking words of comfort and hope to those who had given up on life. There was Jesus helping the confused to understand the mysteries of God. There was Jesus walking into the small villages and into the simple homes and offering a word of peace. There was Jesus telling his disciples to put away the swords in the Garden of Gethsemane when they came to arrest him and instead offered a word of peace. And there was Jesus on the cross remembering his mother and entrusting her to John's care. We're all called to be caregivers in and for the church, to support each other in difficult and troubling times, to offer prayer, to make that phone call, to send an email, to put a message on Facebook, mail a card, send it by Pony Express if you must. It's often as simple as that, a word, a smile, a hug. Maybe it's a meal, maybe it's a loaf of bread, maybe it's a plate of cookies, maybe it's something from the garden, maybe it's a smile or a twinkle in your eye. Being part of a larger community, we also are called to care for those outside these walls. And we do so by bringing canned and dried food for our food pantries, by giving dollars to earthquake relief in Nepal, 
for by saving those wonderful box tops for education and bringing them in for Harriet to collect. It's the mitten tree or the coats for children that keep warm kids in our own community and adults in Syracuse. And it's caring for and recognizing that there are conditions in the world which cause poverty, disease, and hunger, and joining with others to find ways to address them. As we have commissioned new Stephen ministers this morning, I'm reminded that we're all called to be healers, to be caregivers, as God has gifted us. May this church be known as the church of caregivers that sits at the corner of church and central. Amen. <laughs>